Prime Minister Narendra Modi left on Saturday for a three-day trip to the U.S., where he would engage with the Indian diaspora, attend the Quad Leaders Summit, and give a speech at the UN General Assembly's Summit of the Future. PM Narendra Modi in planes for USA to participate in the 6th Quad Leaders Summit and to address the UN Summit of the Future, wrote Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Runthir Jeswal in a post on X. On September 21, US President Joe Biden will hold the 6th Quad Leaders Summit in Wilmington, Delaware, where PM Modi will participate. India, Australia, Japan and the United States form Quad a coalition of four nations united in their determination to promote an open, free, inclusive, wealthy and resilient Indo-Pacific region. In 2025, India will host the Quad Leaders Summit. According to the Ministry of External Affairs, the leaders of the Quad Summit will assess the organization's accomplishments from the previous year and establish the plan of action for the upcoming year to help the nations of the Indo-Pacific area realize their objectives for growth. During his visit to the U.S., PM Modi will address Summit of the Future, at the United Nations General Assembly in New York on September 23rd. The theme of the summit is multilateral solutions for a better tomorrow. Indian Prime Minister Modi is set to hold bilateral meetings with global leaders and U.S. CEOs to foster collaborations in AI, quantum computing, semiconductors and biotechnology, as well as address the Indian community in New York. This year, the Indian Air Force will launch the long-range nearby land attack cruise missile for the first time, according to plans made by the country's Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. India's domestic defense capabilities have advanced significantly with the launch of this missile. The Aeronautical Development Establishment, ADE, under DRDO is responsible for the design and development of the long-range, all-weather, subsonic cruise missile known as Nearby. It is a flexible tool that the Indian military can use to carry both conventional and nuclear weapons. The missile's versatility in a range of combat situations is demonstrated by its ability to be launched from a variety of platforms, including air, sea, and land. After six successful developmental testing, the DRDO declared in February 2023 that the nearby cruise missile development project was complete. The missile has shown to be extremely accurate in its targeting, as seen by its over 90% single-shot kill percentage. An important stage in operationalizing the nearby missile system is the scheduled launch for the Indian Air Force. This will strengthen India's strategic deterrence posture in the area and improve its strike capabilities. A variety of nearby missile variations, including those that can be launched from submarines in the air, are also being developed by DRDO. Changes to the missile's architecture can be made to accommodate various mission profiles and payload types. Its operational adaptability is further increased by the fact that a ship-launched version is presently undergoing developmental trials. ThyssenKrupp Marine Systems TKMS, has presented India with an alluring carrot in an attempt to win the coveted Project 75i tender. If TKMS is given the go-ahead to construct six cutting-edge submarines for the Indian Navy, CEO Oliver Burkhardt has envisioned a thriving Indian ecosystem for the U-212 submarine model. TKMS and Mazagon Dock Shipbuilders Limited have jointly made a bid for the Project 75i procurement, with a total estimated value of more than Rs 45,000 crore. Burkhardt's plan involves more than simply providing parts and components for the submarines. In addition to those made in India, TKMS also plans to source parts and components from Indian manufacturers for its other submarines. Furthermore, TKMS committed to provide a comprehensive transfer of technology package for the six submarines that would be built in India. With this thorough knowledge transfer, India would be able to design and manufacture its own submarines in the future, greatly improving its domestic submarine production capabilities. In the event that TKMS's bid is accepted, India will benefit greatly. TOT would increase its capacity for building and designing submarines, and the creation of a submarine hub might draw industry and promote technological innovation. Moreover, Indian vendors will have the chance to join the worldwide TKMS submarine supply chain. This ambitious proposal comes at a time when India is looking to strengthen its naval capabilities amid growing regional tensions. The potential benefits of TKMS's offer could be a deciding factor in the final selection for the Project 75i tender, the outcome of which is eagerly anticipated by the global defense industry. Based in Hyderabad, Blue Jay Aero is a creative startup whose goal is to create a long-range, hydrogen-powered vertical takeoff and landing, VTOL aircraft. 
The company, which was founded in May 2022 by Utham Kumar Dharmapuri and Marathi Amardeep Srivatsavaya, promises to revolutionize air transportation by utilizing hydrogen fuel cell technology for effective and sustainable flight. The aircraft's dimensions are 4 meters in length and 6 meters in wingspan. At first, it will be able to carry 100 kilograms of cargo. Later iterations will be able to carry up to 1 ton. The first model of the VTOL is anticipated to have a range of 400 to 500 kilometers, with ambitions to expand to 800 kilometers for later models. The hydrogen fuel cell system that Blue Jay's aircraft will use produces energy from hydrogen with only heat and water as byproducts. Blue Jay Aero secured $2.25 million in seed funding from India Partners, Idea Spring Capital, and Rainmatter Foundation for their first commercial product, a fully autonomous cargo EVTOL aircraft, with flight trials planned. Blue Jay, a company with expertise from top aerospace companies, aims to address technical challenges in hydrogen technology while promoting sustainable energy solutions in India. The VTOL aircraft from Blue Jay Aero is well positioned to serve a number of industries, such as urban transit, defense, and logistics. The capabilities of the aircraft might greatly shorten travel times between cities and increase freight transit efficiency, especially in remote locations where regular road transport is less practical. Furthermore, Blue Jay's objective is perfectly aligned with the Indian government's efforts to promote green hydrogen, which might result in a significant reduction in operating costs when compared to traditional hybrid electric systems. The world's largest manufacturer of aircraft engines, G Aerospace, is investing heavily in India as a result of the country's astounding 20-fold rise in exports between 2018 and 2022. Presently, more than 1,300 G Aerospace engines are in use in India, powering Air India, Indigo, and Vistara Airlines Boeing and Airbus aircraft. The company is currently exploring the possibility of setting up a maintenance, repair and overhaul MRO facility in India, given that an additional 2,000 engines are on order and scheduled for delivery over the next nine years. A multi-year contract worth $1 billion was signed in November 2022, tying TSL to the production of commercial aircraft engine components for GE's global engine manufacturing facilities. An MRO plant seems more and more appealing as G Aerospace's engine presence in India grows. Rai stated, We are still looking at an engine MRO here. The company is hard at work developing next-generation open-fan architecture engines, which should be 20% more fuel-efficient, in addition to its current engine lineup. The John F. Welch Technology Center in Bengaluru is home to a sizable amount of the research for the CFM RISE initiative. By the mid-2020s, it is anticipated that these engines will be used on narrow-body aircraft for the first time. Manipur has increased security following reports that well-armed kooky terrorists from Myanmar had infiltrated the state. Security advisor Kuldeep Singh stated on Friday that the Security Operation Group, SOG, met on September 18 to discuss the problem promptly upon receiving the information. The Army, Assam Rifles, Manipur Police, BSF, CRPF, and other security agencies were present. Every security post has received an alert, and the security agencies have also been notified. He added that the 900 militants had entered the area in groups of about 30, because they will require food and shelter, combing operations must be done. The border guarding Assam Rifles have been placed on high alert. Speaking to the media at the CM Secretariat, he continued, all agencies have been briefed to search for raw materials like pipe, explosives and transporter systems used to make drones and other weapons. Railroads and other sensitive places were also notified. Additionally, areas 5 kilometers or less from the foothills were being monitored. Since the attack weapons weighed about 30 kilograms, everyone was advised to use binoculars to observe the operation of the heavy machinery. He noted that 648 bunkers had been dismantled so far. In Manipur, Anti-drone systems have been deployed. 20 or so drone attacks were halted. Seven IEDs, each weighing roughly 7 kilograms, were found. There were additional briefings for officials at oil depots, airports, and other locations. The entire state has a drone ban. According to him, the Assam Rifles also captured a kooky insurgent from Myanmar and turned him over to the police, who would then pursue legal proceedings under the Foreigners Act. The NIA has been tasked with investigating the drone bomb attack at Kutrik because the Manipur government lacks the necessary technology. The DGP and the security advisor had already been notified by the chief minister's secretariat about the incursion of kooky militants from Myanmar into Indian territory. 
According to reports, the extremists who arrived in separate groups were preparing to launch assaults on September 28th. That's all from YKS team for now. If you like the information, then please do share and give a like. You can also become our channel member and support our work. Thanks for watching.